Hey everyone, Paul here, Sam. Welcome to part two of our Fujimi 124 4GT40 build. Before we get going today, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Okay, so part two, uh, we're going to deal with our chassis, interior, all the running gear, engine and what have you. It's a pretty basic kit inside. There's still quite a few parts to clean up and paint and what have you. But the detail is quite basic on this. As I say in the video, you, you, you could detail it up if you wanted. A lot of it can't be seen. Once you get the body on, you're not going to take it back off. Trust me, you're not going to take it back off. Um, so you're not really going to see it. So for me, I'll paint it up as good as I can, give it a quick wash. And um, once it's in there, that's it. It's gone and forgotten with as far as I'm concerned. Interior, eh, yeah, there's a bit of detail in there to bring out. So we'll do the best we can. We've got some belts to add to it. Uh, we'll put a wash here and there. But yeah. I'm not going to go really mad on this one. Just going to be kept pretty simple and um, get it built up. So yeah, lots of semi-gloss black, some metal work, a bit of gluing. Uh, not the longest video today, and then we can come back in part three and get this thing all done, dusted, and put together. So let's get cracking with the build. Right. So instructions. Where are we at today? We're going to do our interior and all our running gear and chassis. So. It's pretty basic, there's not a lot of detail to it, but we're going to make the most of it as we can. We've got plenty of parts to cut off and paint up and what have you, and a little bit of detail painting here and there. But we're going to start with cutting all the parts off the sprue, including the chassis, uh, everything basically, get it all mounted up ready for primer. So there's lots of components to do, although it is fairly simple, there is still a lot of components when you add them all together. So just take your time, go around, make sure you um, are cutting them off at the right point, you're not cutting bits off that you need. It's very easily done. Once all the parts are cut off, we can go around with our sander. Uh, my favourite is the 400 uh, Ultima Thinny Stick. Clean them up, once you're happy with that, give it a go over the buffer, and job done. So, I've sanded off the suspension springs as good as I can with one of our uh, sanders. And it'll always leave a little ridge, so a good little tip I picked up a long time ago is run a little bit of tapnia extra thin in between the spring coils. Leave it a few minutes, a few seconds, and then come back and smooth it over with the brush. Uh, this will melt any seams that are in there and blend them into the rest of the spring. Of course, we've got to mount all our parts now, so we're looking for any mounting points. So the likes of these is a little open end on them. Uh, anything that's got a hole in it, we've got a cocktail stick in it. Anything that doesn't, we'll look for another way to mount it. On parts like this, on the fire extinguisher, we're going to drill a little 1mm hole in the back where you'll never be seen with our little battery-powered drill. And then we can pop a cocktail stick in there. Uh, may need a bit of modification to fit, as we'll see in a second. Snap a little bit off. Flatten the end, and it'll fit perfectly. Sadly, this little battery-powered drill I've had for years you can't buy them anymore, but I'm sure there are similar ones out there, so just have a look around. Anything else that we can't drill is very, very small with small mountain points. You need to grab with a, a clip, or my preferred method is a dab of CA glue on its mountain point. Hold it with a cocktail stick. Once it's stuck, it's pretty secure for spraying. A little bit of patience is required. Once the CA glue's got some purchase, you're good to go. So, in the spray booth now, we've got Ultima Primer, black. Uh, we're through our Ultima Apex, our 30 PSI, through the 0.35 needle, and we're going to give these two or three light coats. Just ensure we get all coverage, all areas covered and what have you, and then leave it to dry overnight. Just don't rush the priming process. Get a little thin base coat down, and then you can start building it up on like our third coat like this. We can start putting on a bit heavier because we've already got the coverage and the primer can already grip to the plastic surface. And as you can see, we're just looking around using the light to our advantage as usual, making sure we've got everywhere covered. And once we're happy, we'll leave that to one side and let it dry overnight. 
The next day now, we've got Tamiya LP5. This is my pre-thinned bottle because it's probably my most used paint. Through the Apex, we're at 18 PSI now. Different airbrush for the lacquer paint. I have separate airbrushes for all the different paints. I'm just going to apply several thin layers and build it up as we go. So we get nice even coverage and get that nice semi-gloss black finish. So yeah, I have a brush for lacquers. I've got two for lacquers, one for wide areas, one for smaller, one for primer, one for metallics, and one for 2K as well. Uh, oh, and one for primer. Separate one for UMP primer as well. Uh, I find it makes life a lot easier. Saves on cleanup time. And um, yeah, it just saves a lot of mucking around with paint contamination, metal flakes in paint or metal flakes in the clear coat. Um, it can be quite an expense, but I think it is a worthwhile investment over time for sure. As you can see on our seats, we're giving it a nice coat of LP5. A lot of parts are LP5 in these cars, so it is a paint worth uh, stocking up on. Again, once these are dry, we'll put them down, leave them to dry for a good few hours. As you see, we've got the very handy U-Star uh, paint stands there. We can clip them in. Metallic work now. We're on to our brake disc, and we've got AK Interactive Steel. Again, another one of my most used colours uh, by far. I think it's a very, very good colour. It's a good paint. A little bit of a debate whether it's an enamel or a lacquer. I personally think it's an enamel. I think it self-levels a little bit more than a lacquer. But it definitely dries a little bit quicker than your standard enamel. But a few, couple of thin coats of this. It does like to be um, sprayed on a little bit heavier, I find, which again makes me think it is enamel. Um, but yeah, jury's out on that one. So the engine, we're going to paint up the engine first in, this is AK matte aluminium now. Um, same with all the rest of these components we've got. We're going to let them dry, and then we're going to carefully mask off that engine and spray the uh, suspension tower and what have you in LP5 semi-gloss black again. So again, just several light coats. Like I say, with the AK, I do find it's very, very forgiving. Um, you can literally hose it on, but I think you get a better finish by getting at least a, a fairly decent base coat down and then maybe coming a little bit heavier. Uh, it is a very good paint. It's one of my favourite metallics. Good range of colours. This matte uh, aluminium is a beautiful colour. As you can see, it lays down really well. We're at 18 PSI, again, through the 0.2 uh, apex now because I like a smaller nozzle for the metallics. Now, the wheels. Now, these have been prime UMP Black Primer. We did strip all the chrome off um, originally using bleach. And my initial thoughts were to have gold centers and gloss black outers. So, as you see, we sprayed the gold. We let that dry overnight. We've got my display circle cutter and we carefully measured the centers uh, it's a fantastic circle cutter it's not a cheap tool at all but again another worthy investment and what we're going to do is mask off the centers in gold as you can see we're just putting our mask in the middle perfect size it takes a little bit of um experimentation to get the size right but once you do you can get them all on burnish them down with a cotton bud and we're ready for paint so like I say, my initial thought was gold centers, gloss black outers, and then gunmetal knock-on uh, wheel caps. As you'll see in a minute, I wasn't too sure on the look. Uh, I did put some pictures on Facebook, got a good bit of feedback on it. Um, but for me and a few of the guys I talk to regularly, we weren't quite sure. And as you'll see in the end, I did change my mind. But I'll show the painting process anyway. Um, so we've got LP1 now, gloss black, lacquer. Uh, again, through the 3.35 Apex, 18 PSI. A couple of coats of that, so we get a nice glossy finish. Unmask it. I'm just having a look. And without the tyres on, the wheels did look good. I was quite happy with this look. Um, as you can see, I thought they looked quite striking. It was a nice contrast. And I did think they looked really, really good. So I was like, at this point, I was like, yeah, this looks good. Happy with that. We've got our knock-on caps now. We're just cleaning up of a uh, ultimate customizable stick. Cut down nice and thin to get rid of the sprue of attachment points in the center. And we spray those in gunmetal. And then we give the wheels a wash with a Tamiya black panel liner. And again, it brought out a whole depth of detail. And I thought these are looking really good. Uh, quite happy with how they were looking. 
So the tech trip with this is don't put it on too heavy and then you shouldn't have a lot to remove. And that'll save you time in the long run and give a nice wash. So we've got some CA glue. This is my Loctite Precision Pen. It's actually called a perfect pen, but for some reason I always call it precision. And we're just look gluing on our knock-on centers. And yeah, I thought these look really good. And then I put the tires on and it completely got lost in amongst all the uh, black of the tire and I didn't like the look. So here we are on the spray booth. We've got AK's bronze colour. Again, talking to my buddy Tim, who's uh, pretty good advice on cars, has helped me along the way. Thanks, Tim. Always appreciated. Not that he'll probably watch this because he doesn't really watch my videos. <laughs> He's going to hate me for saying that. Um, we had to look at the bronze colours and, yeah, I thought, yeah, it looks good. I test sprayed a, a spoon with the AK bronze. I thought, you know what, that looks pretty good. So stripped the wheels, reprimed them. And we gave him a few coats of the AK bronze. If you ever need to strip small parts or even bodies, Mr. Levelin Thinner is safe on all plastics. Uh, well, styrene, including clear parts. Brush it on, agitate it with a toothbrush, and then load up your airbrush with a bit and jet wash it off. Works absolutely fantastic. Very quick, very simple, um, and really easy to do. So, good little tip passed along to me by uh, my friend Norman, funnily enough, who probably will watch this. So, hello, Norman. <laughs> Right, tyre seams. I've got an RC, uh, core RC tool I was sent by, I think it was Kevin sent me this. Um, and it's a RC tyre seam remover. And it works well on the model uh, tyres as well, just for getting the rubber flash off. Now, I am told the cuticle remover is almost, well, I think it is the identical tool. So if you've got one of those, or you can steal one off your wife, or you do things like this at the weekend, you could, um, yeah, you could use that and knock yourself out but yeah it's a very simple little tool and just save a little bit of time so we've masked up the very rear part of the chassis now this is where um the part we're spraying matte aluminium mounts so we're masking it up using cling film to mask up the rest of it and we're going to spray that in matte aluminium to match the other part too our seats are dry now um, the lovely LP5 semi-gloss black. So what we're going to do, um, it's got lovely recessed detail in there. We're going to use some of the grey Tamiya panel line wash. And just add some detail to the centres. Let this dry, rub off the excess, and it'll add a nice contrasting look to the seat. As you can see, there's plenty of detail in there. So just go around systematically and fill each little recess with some of the uh, the wash. Again, it's a good wash from Tamiya. Um, not easily available in the UK, sadly. I really do wish it was. Um, you have to import it a lot of the time. Uh, Enamel-based. Again, dries super fast. Really quick. Really easy to remove. And, uh, yeah, it, gives, it does leave a good effect. As you can see, plenty of um, work to do here. So we'll let that dry for a few hours. Uh, as you can see, fully covered now. Put it to one side for a few hours, let it dry. We're going to do our rear um, shelf, I suppose it is. I don't think it's a partial shelf, I think it's an engine cover more than anything. So there's a couple of recessed areas on this. We'll put some grey washing. We've got our various Azu tapes. And we're going to mask up our engine detail on the back of this suspension tower. Again, very, very handy tapes. No idea what I did without these beforehand. Um, absolutely love them. One of my uh, favourite model in sundries. And again, you can buy this from Ultimate, myself and Lee. Links in the description down below. But they are super handy. Varying sizes from 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1, 1 1.5, 2 and 2.5 mil. Very, very handy. And just as good a quality as Tamiya tape. So we've got all the detail... Uh, masked off of the Azu, coming with some Tamiya, and masked off the rest. So that is now ready for some LP5 again. Now we've got a cotton bud with some odorless mineral spirits on. We use Sansador from Windsor Newton. And we're just taking off all the excess wash until we've got all of it off. We'll then let it dry again and then go over it again because there's always remnants left. So there we go, there's our freshly painted uh, engine and I guess it's a bulkhead kind of thing. So they're ready to be left to dry. 
are uh, freshly painted steel brake discs and calipers and are being detail painted and we've got the Mist Hobby Aqueous, uh, I think it's black steel. Metal black it is, sorry I was just looking. <laughs> so yeah, Mr. Hobby Metal Black. One of my favourite colours for calipers. So we just brush paint that on, leave that to dry. It is thinned with a drop of Mr. Level and Thinner. And there we go. Starting to assemble some of the components. There's our axle going on our wheels. We do have our poly caps in the back as well. There's two per side. And before we commit to putting the axle through the wheels, we'll put a bit of a black panel line wash on our brake discs. Plenty of recess detail on these. Push our wheels through. So we're coming back out in a minute anyway. I'm just going to glue this section on at the back here. I'm not quite sure what these are replicating. Are they fuel tanks? I am not sure. If anyone knows, let me know in the chat. So glued in place, we've got some strut supports now. These are pretty tricky to get in. So just take your time with those. Taking the wheel back off to get a suspension component in. Just being a bit tricky. As you can see, there's our poly caps, two per wheel. And there's a metal axle on the back. Slot through each brake disc and then right through the center of the engine and out the other side. Fits absolutely perfect. And you literally just push it home. And there you go. Job done. Nice and easy. We've got our rear screen to glue into our um, engine slash um, cockpit interior bulkhead. So we're just putting some of the um, Bob Smith's uh, Siego on there, the odorless stuff, the one that's safe for uh, plastics and foam and what have you. doesn't really fog. So just be careful because it does mark if you're not careful, but it doesn't fog. Front brake calipers and discs now, they've been detail painted up the same as the back. Slightly different fitting on these. There's a little um, hub slash pin that goes through. As you can see, I didn't bother painting it because it's just going to hinder the poly caps. So again, before we commit to putting these in, just hold it by the pin. We'll give it a wash after we pick it back up. And again, black panel line wash, lovely recess detail on these discs. Sadly, really can't see a lot through the wheel. But it is there. We know it's there. And if you look closely, you can see it. Like I said, there's not a massive amount of detail on this kit. It is pretty simplified. The engine especially. You can't really see a lot through the back screen anyway. Um, so just make the most of it as what you can. You could super detail it should you wish. Um, for me, if it can't really be seen, I can't always see the point in doing it. But that's just me. Everyone's got their own thoughts and what have you. And trust me, once this body is on, you'll see how tight it is in part three. You will not want to take it back off. Because it is ultra tight getting it over that chassis. And, um, yeah, it's quite worrying when you're putting it on. So, yeah, we just uh, put a wash on. I'm just going to leave it a second. Just make sure we don't get any pool up. Because if we do, we'll we'll wick it off with a cotton bud. I'm talking to somebody like, yeah, this, that, yeah. I'm in uh, Hangouts when I'm filming these. So I'm often talking to people while I'm filming. And then I voice over afterwards. So, yeah, I'm obviously talking to somebody there. So, there we go. Once we're happy with that, we can insert it into the wheel. Push it fully home with our tweezers. Repeat for the other side. And then we can start mounting them up. So there's a lower component that needs gluing in. There are locating points on the chassis. They are pretty tricky, so just take your time. Test fit is um, ideal. And once you've got that lower one in, we can put our cockpit tub in. A couple of locating points underneath. You can see the line where our clip was, where we held it when we painted it. But luckily, this will all cover it now anyway. Again, quite a tight fit. So line up your locating points, and then it'll probably need just pushing back a little bit as you locate them in. And it will almost click in at the center, and then it'll click in at the front in that part you just pushed in. There you go, click. So a rear bulkhead slash, well, not bulkhead. I guess it's an engine cover, really. Just sits on the back under that screen we glued on before and then sits just on top of the exhaust. So, a couple of glue spots with some CA glue. 
and we've got the upper part of the uh, suspension mount slash steering mount to put in. So again, push it home, make sure it's in. The little suspension actual um, components, a spring and shock absorber, they clip in top and bottom. They're a little bit tricky, so take your time. And again, we're going to give it a grey wash just over the springs and then pop our wheels in place. So that's it, they clip in top and bottom. But not a bad fit, pretty positive. Not too bad at all. And then we've got our steering rack arm. Which again, just refer to instructions and just clips in over the top. Nice and simple. And quite nice and accessible, really. Uh, decals now into the dashboard. Uh, that's all dried. We've got several decals to put on there. So we're going to cut them out and then pop them in some water. And then apply them one by one. They are numbered, so pay attention to your instructions. We're just going to put them in place. And then we'll wick out all the water with a cotton bud and then hit it with our ultimate. Uh, it'd be the strong solution, uh, extra strong solution we'll hit these with straight away. For Jimmy decals, notorious for being a pain, uh, but the uh, extra strong solution will tame these in pretty quick fashion. So there we go, extra strong solution. Now, if you are using this, don't let it pull up. If you do, wick it off. Once you put it on, don't touch it again. So try not to let it pull up in the first place. Just put enough on to get the decal moist. If you are going to move it, be very quick because you won't get a lot of time. Steering wheel, a little bit of CA glue, glued in place, make sure it's straight. And there we go. And then a little bit of detail painting, a little bit of silver Vallejo model there, just to pick out the detail on the steering wheel. Once that's done, again, that's a little bit of detail and interest to it. We can then glue um, the dashboard's glued in place now. We've got our perfect pen from Loctite. I'm going to glue the sides in as well. Again, make sure you're orientated the right way. Make sure you've got a seagull on your hands as well. And we've got our seatbelts. Now, this kit did come with um, vinyl stuff, is what I'm going to say. You can see a top left where I've been cutting it. It was terrible. I thought, I'll give it a whirl just for the camera, and then thought, no, it's completely rubbish. Let's use some proper ribbon and we'll make the belts properly. And that's what we did. It's a really, really simple belt to make. Uh, nowhere near as complex as the ones I normally do. Uh, pretty simple. Two shoulder straps, two waist straps. And that is it. We're just two pieces of P on each shoulder strap and one on each waist one. So pretty quick and simple. Using double-sided tape to stick it down. Using the uh, PE shears for the PE and to cut the ribbon. And there we go. Job done. So a good dab of CA glue on the back. We can slot the seats in place. Like so. And there we go. That's our interior done. Very basic. We're not going to see a lot through the screens. I've already built this kit before. I know exactly what you can see through there. But we've got a bit of detail on the seat. As you see, we've added a wash to the dashboard, which we'll remove in a minute. Uh, we've got the belts in there. All the instrument panels are there as well. And the steering wheel. Uh, we also have our gear selector in there and the clutch and accelerator pedals were put in earlier. Wipe off that wash. And there we go. That is our chassis. Interior. All ready to go. And there's our newly coloured bronze wheels with our gunmetal body, which I think will look a lot better. And there we go. So that's the second part done. We'll be back for part three and we'll get this all finished. Right, there we go. Um, yeah, it's coming along well. Wheel change colour. Yeah, a little bit disappointed that my initial colour didn't look great, but until the tyres were on, it looked great. It really did. I thought it's going to look really nice. Nice contrasting black and gold. And as soon as those tyres went on, the black was just lost in the tyres, and it just looked odd. Um, as you were saying, I think if they were lower profile tyres, it would look good. But just the way those high wall tyres are, it just looks really odd. So a quick strip, colour change. I'm much happier with the new colour. The bronze looks a lot better. 
and it's going to be a real, I think it's going to be a nice, dark, mean looking car this one I think. Um, I'm doing it as a modern day kind of road car, I guess, with a bit more of a different colour and the wheels and what have you, so it's not a full blown race car, but this is how I've envisioned it as such, so that's what we're going for. So yeah, we've got a bit of work to do in part three, we've still got all the bodywork to polish up. Uh, we've got all our lights to do, we've got uh, the glass work to do, um, some P trim at the back to pop in, um, and then we can get it all assembled and done. So hopefully we'll be back very soon. I caught this one off the bench. I quite like to get back to the bike. I would to <laughs> like to get to my own next personal build that I'm not filming because they're a bit quicker for me because I'm not leaving stuff for a few days to film or what have you. So looking forward to my next personal build as well should be fun and then we'll come back and we'll do that uh Ravel chevelle so that'll be cool as well so thanks for watching today as always check out international scale model facebook page and forum umpretail.com you can get a lot of the products i've shown you in the video today if you click the description down below there's a list of products listed in there it's a must be a hundred plus long list now um of everything you'll see me using in my videos so go over there and click on that if you're unsure of what it is it's anything and everything from the camera the mac the lights paint tools anything and everything um uh, it's all listed over there make sure you're um on a live at the bench show uh facebook page and my off uh, hangout group page as well um i pull sm page and um Make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. I read every single comment and reply to everyone as well. I appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment and support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon for part three. Take care. Bye-bye.